So, yeah, I definitely just recorded a video, but I have a completely separate thought. Oh, I cannot get this camera straight. Okay. So, I have a completely separate thought about um, one of the books that I just finished reading. It's called Consciousism by Kwame Nkrumah. If I have said his name wrong, forgive me and correct it among yourself. Um, just a small backstory on him. He is the Ghanaian president who led Ghana to independence. He is a big proponent for socialism. And he was also overthrown. Okay, so essentially this book, it was it was a life changer for me. It was a game changer. Really almost made me want to drop out of grad school. But here's why. So he starts off the book talking about African American students and saying that um, there's a certain type of student, a token student, who is able to understand both sides of the spectrum and by both sides of the spectrum I mean the student is able to communicate with the professors especially if you're attending a PWI or predominantly white institution then this token student is able to communicate with the professors as well as communicate and relate to their people meaning other african-american grad students and he goes in to essentially say that these students, these token students, are the most vulnerable because they become the target of the PWI to fix the problem that the PWI created. So what is the problem that I'm referring to? The problem of African American students feeling uncomfortable or feeling... Um, like things are happening to them because they're black and so it comes down to the institution and it's leaders within the institution but it comes down to the leaders in the institution coming to these students who have been successful at navigating both sides of this spectra and asking them for their opinion, asking them for what changes do they feel like need, should, should be made to the institution. And in which um, I will say that I partially agree with um, Kwame. And I may even go to the extent to say that, you know, I don't want to fix the institution's problem. Now, I will flesh that out as we go through this conversation. So... Um, yeah, so back to how we're able to navigate and communicate with both sides of the spectrum. And so essentially they come to us students and they say, well, you know, what do you think needs to be done? What changes do we need to be made? How can we fix this climate issue that is occurring so that you feel more comfortable here? Well, from my experience, um, and I have attended an HBCU as well as attending a PWI. And I will say one, that Kwame is right in that having these conversations is a distraction to the student. Is it a bad distraction? Um, I don't say yes or no to that. But it is a distraction to the student. Conversations that are had here or at the PWI institution are not conversations that were had at my um, HBCU or historically black college or university. But, um, you know, I, I didn't have to worry about feeling uncomfortable or as if someone, the idea of, you know, someone is being harder on me because of my race. That wasn't a thing. Um, and so he says that, you know, when these token students come around, they grab them and they ask them to do all this work. Work, I say, but they ask them to do all this work and provide their advice. And that's essentially taking away from their goal or their life goals. And one can easily say, well, the student can always just say that that's not my interest. That's not what I want to do. But it's also a double-sided double-edged sword because you know 
if you care about other people and you don't want your fellow people to you know, experience discomfort or feel like they don't belong somewhere, then you think, why wouldn't I step up and say something? And sometimes they even tend to try to, you know, guilt people into it, into things by saying, you know, well, you have to give back. You're standing on the shoulders of all of your ancestors. You have to make sure this, or you have to make sure that. And so it's it's a little taxing, or it can be taxing. And this is known. Um, and this is actually a thought that doesn't strictly pertain to minority students. Because in some programs across the board, you have those students that tend to involve themselves. And this is regardless of race, but they're just the students that involve themselves in things while you have, um, you know, other students that never involve themselves in anything. And so the students who are constantly involving themselves in things get pulled to multiple places. So this is definitely not something that um, isn't seen in other races or amongst other groups. But with African students, I will say that the thought of, is this because of my race? Is this happening? You know, that's just not a thought for all students. And it makes it even tougher when you're the only one. So if you step into a space where you've been taken in and you look around you and you see that, oh, I'm the only minority in this, it's very hard to not think, that some of the things that are occurring to you are occurring or are not occurring because you're black or because you're whatever minority race. And so that question is a forever lingering question in some students' minds. And I like to relate this to Black Panther um, in a kind of a little distant from the exact storyline, but when you look at the two characters, T'Challa and Killmonger, I would say that T'Challa is a, he's selfish. He doesn't want to share his research, his resources with the other countries, not because he doesn't want to help them, but because he does not govern those people. He knows that he controls a certain amount of people and he is able to protect and maintain a certain group of people. And that's the people that he cares about. He does not expand his resources out farther than what he is able to without, um, just to make sure that one, he isn't putting his own people in jeopardy. And I think that is the one of the big reasons behind the way that the Wakandian, the Wakandian society is ran. Whereas when you have um, Killmonger, he's coming in and he's saying that you have all these resources. You need to share them. You need to help all our brothers and sisters all over the world. And he's saying that, you know, we need to get out there and give back, share the knowledge and everything that we have. And so relating this back to consciousness, where T'Challa has the, um, the selfish attitude towards things essentially he's saying that i'm not going to prolong my agenda i'm not going to sidetrack myself to fix the problems that were created by other people whereas killmonger is saying the opposite and saying that yes let's go fix the problems of these other people but essentially um the movie ends with T'Challa buying up the block. And so um, I think that this is a great solution to the issue that we have. And that one, we, well, let me rephrase that one, I do not want to solve the institution's problems, but I do want to help my people. And so when T'Challa bought up the block in Oakland, he was essentially taking control. He was purchasing the land, purchasing the buildings, so that what happened in those areas was under his jurisdiction. It now became something of his territory. And so I feel like we as people, we can get out there and 
extend our resources and make our help without putting ourselves at detriment as long as it's on our own terms and under our own control. And I think that's probably the best way that we should do this and the best way that we should work to build ourselves up and build our confidence up and not feel like we're at um, the whim of every single time there's a problem, we have to be the ones to come solve it.